Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today we are starting Affordable Friday. You guys asked for this. So every single Friday, I'm going to be posting a drugstore makeup video. And for today's video, I have some new drugstore makeup that I've been wanting to test out. So I figured I would save these to test out on camera. I don't have a full face, hence why I already have like foundation and brows on. But we've got some Koki, Milani, Essence, something from Flower that I want to use. Also, that's not like brand new that I have actually tried. That's the only one I've tried. The other ones you're gonna see my first impression on. But if you're new here, hello, my name's Kelly. Apparently now every Friday you can find a drugstore related video from me. So if you wanna see that, be sure to subscribe. In addition to that, I do post four videos a week total. So you can always find new content here on this channel. Be sure to subscribe if that sounds good to you. And let's go ahead and hop into it. So it's very gloomy today. It is snowing as you can probably see behind me. Two days ago it was 70 degrees and now it's snowing, but I kept my little lamp on. So this is my desk and then I have a lamp in the corner, which I kept on because it's a nice warm light while everything else is feeling very like blue and gray and dreary. So let's start with the blush. I am trying to decide which one of these I want to use. This is from Koki and these are their new gradient blushes. These are not brand new. They've been out for a few months now, but I haven't tried them. I actually didn't realize that these were out. I thought the only blushes that they had were the blush trios, but they sent these to me the other day and I was like, ooh, I want to try these. So they are all ombre. So some of them I feel like have a more significant ombre. Like this one goes from hot pink to lilac to nude. Some of them I feel like are kind of more subtle. Like this one's a little subtle. So is this one. Hmm, the palette that I'm going to be using is like very pastel. So I feel like I want to incorporate that with this. Why do I want to use this one? This is a very hard decision. This nude one is really pretty though, if you like nudes. You know what, let me try this because this is the eyeshadow palette and they are looking very similar. So this is in the shade Starcrossed. Now the brush that I always use for blush that I swear by is this one from Flower Beauty. And I think it's just called the blush brush. I've been using this so long. If it had a name on it, it has now worn off, but I will try to link this down below. Now I'm thinking I'm gonna dip my brush I mean, kind of into all of them. I guess we'll just coat the whole thing. My only qualm with gradient products like this is that sometimes it's hard to know where I have dipped in and I feel like I don't always replicate the same tone on both cheeks. Let me get my handheld mirror. This is also from Koki actually, but I think I, I was kind of worried that that color was going to be super intense because it looked really bold in the pan but I feel like it's kind of more buildable, which could be nice. So recently I have been like re-watching Sex in the City, like from start to finish, which I've never watched it fully from start to finish. I've just like caught it on TV and whatnot. And I have been just like captivated by the early 2000s makeup style and like fashion trends in the show. And one thing that I noticed is the makeup artist would apply the blush like just right here. Whereas these days, I feel like blush trends are a little more of almost an 80s inspiration where it's quite high up on the cheek and kind of like faded into the temple and the blush goes like the whole length of the cheek. Whereas for a while, I feel like the style was just to place it here, like on the apple and not really into the bronzer. So that's the kind of look I'm going for today. I'm gonna dust like a touch on my nose, but I do kind of like this look where it looks like you just pinched your cheek. Now this definitely looks matte on the skin, which I kind of like for my blush. I don't really like a blush that's super glowy, but that's a preference thing. If you do, you might not like this, but something about a matte blush almost just looks airbrushed on the skin. It's just so smooth. I don't have a new bronzer, so I'll go ahead and use my favorite drugstore bronzer, which is the Milani Silky Matte, and I wear the shade 01. But I'm excited about this series. I have a, a running list going of videos that I want to film for this Affordable Friday series. I'm thinking that the next one is going to be testing YouTuber drugstore favorites because I've ordered all the products for that. I'm pretty sure they've all come in now. So I'm, I'm thinking that will likely be next Friday unless there's another video that feels more urgent for me to post first in terms of not urgent, but like the timing would fit better. That's why I was like, let me do this one first because it's newer makeup. It's not brand new, but it's new enough that I want to share it now instead of waiting another week. But maybe I'll do some like best and worst drugstore blank, like my favorite drugstore concealers or foundations. Let me know what videos you want to see 
from this series. And then I'm just gonna powder a little bit now that I have that on. This is one of my favorite drugstore powders actually. This is the CoverGirl Clean Fresh. And the foundation that I applied before I sat down to film was not drugstore, it's the Tarte Maracuja Tinted Moisturizer. So kind of more of a lightweight type of product. All right, zooming in a little bit to do eyes. This palette is from Milani. It is called the Gilded Flora Palette. Now this is not brand new. This was one that initially when I saw it, I thought it looked very pretty, but I was like, you know, I probably don't need it. But then when it came, it came in PR and I was like, wait, this is actually really pretty. So let's try this out on camera. I don't know why I, I don't know why I don't have much faith in this. For some reason, I'm like, these pastels just look like they're going to be sheer. And I normally really like Milani formula, so we'll see. But I really want to do a pastel look. Now, right now, I just have some concealer on my eyelids, which is what I often use, so we'll see if that's enough. Otherwise, I have a white base that I might try. But I'm thinking I want to do like a yellow, purple, maybe even like yellow, pink to purple ombre. Let me try that. So I'm going to start with the shade What's Up Buttercup, and I'm taking it on this brush from e.l.f. This is from the Cookies and Dreams collection, and it's like quite dense, so I feel like it'll be good for packing color on. Okay, that's not bad. For being a pastel without a base, this is actually a little bit more noticeable than I was expecting. I kind of thought that I was going to have to really layer this up, but that's not bad. I think if I put this over a white base, I could get it even more intense. So, okay, definitely a lot of kick up, but that's fine. The brightness of this pink blush on my cheeks is kind of reminding me of the new one that I'm loving from Persona, which is their limited edition pink blush in Bubbly. I feel like the way I kind of combined the gradient, the color is quite similar to bubbly. Okay, so we've got the yellow laid down. Now I'm gonna take the matte pink, which is called My Pretty Peony. Again, lots of kick up. So maybe I should have done my eyes first, but with this one, I'm going to tap it in the middle. Now this is really soft. I feel like it's not super noticeable. And I wonder how much this would show up on a different skin tone because I'm quite pale and I still do think it would look better over a white base. The one I've been using recently is the one from the Elf Cookies and Dreams collection. Oh my God, I have so much kick up on my pants right now. Okay, this is really powdery, a lot of kick up. But lately I've been using the white base from the elf cookies and cream collection which is actually just like a cream shadow stick but i've been using that recently when i want to lay down a pastel and i feel like it's help it helps a lot okay let's do lavender fields i can't believe how much powder i have on me right now this color right here is really pretty i kind of want to use this at some point to do just a one shadow look of just this lilac purple can you see that? I mean, it's pretty subtle. And I'm just gonna keep going back and forth and taking a little bit more of each shade and applying it and blending side to side so that it's less of a harsh distinction between all the shades and more of like a gradient. That's what I'm going for, just a gradient. Kind of like the blush. I want it to look like the blush in the pan. Okay, this looks pretty cool, but let me try just for the video. Let's try to do shimmers over top to see. So I'm gonna take Busy Bee, you can't see what I'm doing, can you? I'm gonna take Busy Bee, which is the yellow that's next to the matte yellow, and I'm just gonna pick that up and apply it over top, see what that does. I feel like this shade doesn't pick up super well on a brush, but it would probably be better with your fingers. I can, you can, yeah, you can tell. This just is gonna pick up better with your fingers which is difficult for me because my finger is not small enough to get into the little spot that I need that shadow to be. Okay, now I'm going to take the pink shimmer, which is bouquet over here. I'm gonna try to do that on my finger also. I can already tell that I liked this look more before I did this, but at least this way we can try a few different shades. And then let's take Forget Me Not right here onto the outer corner. Yeah, because these don't pick up on a brush that well and you have to use your finger, it, I feel like it ends up getting kind of messy. I don't mind using, yeah, I'm getting a lot of fallout, hold on. I don't mind using my finger for a shadow when it's like all over my lid and a simple look, but when it's something like this, it is kind of tricky. I feel like it can kind of ruin the look. And even now, 
The yellow and the pink shimmers were fine, but this forget-me-not shimmer, I feel like as I was blending it, it just kind of disappeared. The, that shimmer is a little more like glittery. I feel like it's disappearing because it's falling out onto my cheeks. Like the color isn't really there. So I'm just taking a little bit of the matte purple that we used and applying that and kind of blending this out partially because that shimmery purple just disappeared. So I need to bring something back. Hmm, I wanted to love this palette because I think the color story is really pretty, but I don't know about the formula. I'm actually just gonna take a little bit more of the matte pink over top also. Just because that color is kind of disappearing too. I'm thinking this is going to be one of those palettes where if you're doing a subtle look and you're just using like one shade, I could see it working well and looking pretty. But if you're trying to do something a little bit more intricate like this, I don't know that these shadows perform well together. Okay, I went ahead and added some mascara and some winged liner. I, oh, it looks a little bad over here, but that was my own fault. I wanted to do a like purple wing to go with this, but there's not really anything in here that's deep enough for that. I could have maybe used Orchid, but I still wanted something deeper. That would be another con for this palette is that there really aren't like grounding shades. Yeah, it's supposed to be more pastel, but these are not that deep if you wanted to kind of finish off a look like that. I know personally, I'll probably dip into something else, which is not the end of the world, but you know, something to note. But if you're wondering, I made my purple wing with the Novel of Cupid's Arrow in the shade three. I use these almost all the time for my wing. And then sometimes I'll put shadow on top, sometimes I won't. But then I added mascara. And then I'm wanting to use this today. This is from Flower Beauty. These are the Chrome, oh my gosh, the Chrome Crush Pigments. So they, don't they kind of remind you of like a Charlotte Tilbury or like Hourglass type of product in terms of the packaging? So I've had these for a while. I've been testing these for a while because they asked me to film a little video for their TikTok. So I'm quite familiar with these, but I thought I'd use this on camera. This shade is called Jade. And I want to pick this up with my finger and apply it for my inner corner highlight. Now, because I'm pretty familiar with these, they also, I would say, pick up better with your finger. But I don't mind that as much with this type of product because that's how I would be using it. When I'm using a product like this, ew, that looks so cool. It is, oh, this looks really cool. This eye look, like the execution is not totally there, but the concept I'm into. But with this type of product anyways, in a pot, I usually use these as like quick on the go products. So. I'm not using a brush with them anyways, but you definitely get more intensity with a brush. I mean, with your finger. Wow, this is fun. Okay, let's do lips. All right, I just added Old Reliable for myself, which is this from NYX. This is the shade Peekaboo Neutral. I talk about it constantly. It is a Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk dupe. And now we're trying these from Essence, and I'm really trying to pick a shade here. So these are the Extreme Shine Volume Gloss Lip Glosses. Now, they made these before, but these were actually reformulated, and these are $3.99. When I was reading the reviews on Ulta, a lot of people were saying they don't like these as much as the original. They did send me what I, I think was the entire collection, and some of them are just clear like this, and then some of them are like a milky color with like glitter in them. Now, I ended up giving one of these to my roommate, one that was more similar to this color, like this, this formula that's a little bit more shimmery as opposed to clear glossy. And she said she hated it. Those were her exact words. I hate this. And she kept saying it all night. <laughs> so we'll see if I also hate it. I'm trying to decide. I kind of want to go with one of these because this is right up my alley right now. I'm pretty obsessed with lip products like this. Milani has one also that's very similar that I've been wearing a lot. I'm trying to decide if I go clear or if I do a pink tint, which I normally love this type of color. Actually, it's more of like a as of recently thing, not a forever thing, but let's actually try the clear one. I feel like a clear lip gloss like this could be a staple. So let's see if this is good. The shade is called Crystal Clear. If you're wondering, the pink is called Summer Punch. So they do have like a sweet smell and let's see. I was like waiting for a second because for some reason, I was expecting this to be like a Too Faced lip injection type of feel. 
this did exactly what I was expecting it to. It looks like a clear lip gloss, which is nice, you know, always a staple. So far, I'm not hating it as much as everyone else, but I wonder if what they were hating was the other formula. I would say I enjoyed everything except for this palette is maybe not the most amazing formula, at least based on first impression, but I'm gonna test this one out more and eventually get back to you guys with some reviews. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'm so excited for this new series. Be sure to subscribe and I will see you in my next one. Bye.